Hey, here we go. How do I look? Do I look good? Do I look good? I feel good. I see people outside walking their dogs this morning. Hey, it is Wednesday. You know what's going on around here? I am cooking pulled pork. I put it on at 6.30 this morning. It's going to cook all day long. And about 5 o'clock tonight, or quarter after, I'm going to drain it. That pork is going to fall apart. And I'm going to put my secret sauce in there. And at 6 o'clock, this place will be packed with people. And you know why they're going to be here? Because I'm so nice. Actually, they're going to be here for fellowship. For the word. And for the poor, pulled pork. Huh? Hey, we're going to have a great time. I love Wednesday nights because that's our intimate church family time. But, right now, I want to talk to you about how you can know if there's a curse going on in your life. How you can know. I can, I can talk to somebody for two minutes and I can generally tell you what's going on in their life. Amen. How you can know. Now, I know that the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He did. But here's the kicker. He redeemed us, but he did not remove the curses from everybody's life. God doesn't do that. I just saw a deal uh, on, and it was an article of some kind today, where somebody was talking about how to get rid of curses. And they said, ask God to get rid of the curses for you, to take them away. How many of you know that person, a very prominent preacher, has no idea what he's talking about. Did Jesus deal with people who had curses? Yes. Did he ever pray for a person who had curses? Oh, Lord, this is Jesus. And I need you to help me out here with this person. Take this curse away. Please. Jesus never did that. No, he never did that. How you can know if there's curses operating in your life. How many of you know that, that a curse, I'll tell you what a curse is. Now, the blessing is the opposite of a curse. And the blessing is empowerment to succeed. It's being empowered to succeed. If you are empowered to succeed, things work out for you. If you are not empowered to succeed, if you are empowered to fail, nothing works out for you. Now, a curse is the empowerment to fail or to be sick or to have lack or to have disease. That's a curse. <clears throat> I, I, I tell people this. A curse is when, a devil, when the devil has continual permission to inflict upon a person. It is continual, continuous permission to inflict upon a person. Here's the deal. Once the devil gets into your life with a curse, 
He will never leave. Never. Ever. You can cry out to God, I'm telling you what. You can believe God for all your worth. You can pray as hard as you can pray. You can take the Dave Ramsey and the Crown Financial courses all you want. You can have every preacher in the country smack you on the forehead until you are dizzy and it does not remove curses. Only one thing will remove a curse and that is a command made by someone who operates at an extremely high level of faith in the name of Jesus. That's the only thing that will remove it. Amen. And there really is very few people in this country who can do that. There's some. I tell people this, I'm not the only one. But there's very few of us. Very few. Most of these preachers, they, they can't deal with this. Now, how do you know if you have a curse operating in your life? People call me all the time. They go, oh, Pastor Jim, I think I got, I, I think there's curses in my life. I think I'm cursed. They're probably right. They're probably right. It shall come to pass. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. It shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. That's to get into sin and disobedience. It says here in verse 16, Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. Now, are we talking curses here? People say to me, well, Pastor Jim, Christians can't be possessed. That's right. A Christian, a born-again Christian, cannot be possessed by the devil. And the reason for that is because inside your spirit is the spirit of God. He can't get in there. But that doesn't mean that other parts of your life are not cursed. Shambach, who was the assistant and associate of A.A. A. Allen, always said, there's no such thing as luck. You're either blessed or you're cursed. I was sitting 10, 15 feet away from him one time when he said that. And I've watched a lot of his tapes and read a lot of his stuff. And he, says, he said it every, every meeting he had. No such thing as luck. You're either blessed or you're cursed. He's right. There's no such thing as luck. People are blessed or they're cursed. Amen. Now you can, you know there's a curse going on in your life. Here, I'll, I'll talk to you about your, how about your finances? How about your finances? All this is the curse of the law. It says in verse 29, Deuteronomy 28, 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled forever, and nobody will be able to help you. Now that's a curse on your life and your finances. That means that nothing you do will ever work out. You'll never be able to save any money. You'll never be prosperous. You'll never live in abundance forever, it says. And nobody can help you. In those days, nobody could. But this was before Jesus. Now we can help you because these people did not have the name of Jesus. We do. Big difference, folks. Huge difference. So big, as a matter of fact, it's like these, you don't have to live with these curses. Now, how can you tell if, if you or other people have curses when they're sick and broke? Curses. God said to Adam, he says, cursed be the earth because of you. Genesis 3, 17, read it. That's a curse on the earth. That's a curse on the health, 
That's a curse on your finances. I'm telling you, when the devil gets into your life, look at Job. When the devil got access to Job, the first thing he did was, was, was take everything he had away. The second thing he did was make him sick. If you are sick and broke, I guarantee you there's curses working in your life. We can break it. Once we break these, these, these curses of poverty and lack, that, that it talks about right here, once we break these curses that are causing sickness, heart disease is a curse. The doctors will tell you that it is hereditary. I got news for you. The word hereditary means generational curse. Once that is broken, the heart disease goes away. Cancer, especially in women, breast cancer is a generational curse. Once we break that, 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 risk of cancer will leave you. And if you have cancer, we can get you healed. Amen. Now I'm telling you people, this is not rocket science. I don't know why every preacher in the country doesn't have a hold of this, but they don't. But we do. We do. A.A. A. Allen did. Oral Roberts did. T.L. Osborne did. I'm not the only one. I got it from those people. Amen. And I don't know why everybody isn't getting it from those people. It's all in there. It's in my book, Jesus. It's in this book that happens to be right here that Jane is reading called Healing the Sick by T.L. Osborne. It's all in there. It's all in there. You don't have to be sick. Amen. It's all caused by curses and, and demonic activity. And I'm telling you what, Jesus healed all who were oppressed of the devil. If they were oppressed of the devil, what was going on? I got news for you. They had curses of sickness in their life. He healed them. How did he heal them? He told the devil to come out. Now I'm telling you, this is not hard. That's how we get cancer healed. That's how we get brain tumors healed. Uh, somebody brought me a lady one time, a non-believing lady, real estate lady, beautiful lady, 35 years old with a little girl with her. Both of them crying. She had a melanoma on her leg that had spread. Death sentence. She was scared to death. I cursed it. I told it. I said, you foul spirit, come out of there in Jesus' name. Now you dry up and go away. She, that was, I, then the following week, she went for a biopsy. It was gone. That was two, three years ago. She's fine. No recurrence, no problems. I'm telling you what, we broke it. Broke it. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you what, there is so much power in the name of Jesus, it will break any curse that's causing sickness and poverty in your life. But somebody has to have that faith to do it. That would be me. If you can't find somebody else to help you, please get a hold of me. Go to my website, increasenow.com. My phone number is right there. I will break every curse in your life. I'm telling you what, we'll get you going. We'll get you going. We'll, we'll send you out the door curse-free. Everybody, when they leave my church every Sunday morning, I have broken every curse. I speak over my partners every day. Mary will tell you, when we get in the car every morning, the first thing I do is bind the devil in the lives of everybody in my church and all of our partners. I don't allow that. I don't allow curses in the lives of my partners, and I don't allow curses in the lives of the people in my church. Amen. Because I have that authority. Amen. I don't have the authority to tell you how to live your life, but I got the authority to keep the devil out of your life if you're a partner with this ministry. Go to my website, increasenow.com. Watch these videos, these free videos. Watch one of these every day. They are absolutely life-changing. 10, 12, 13 minutes long. Just like this one. They're all in there, hundreds and hundreds of them. They're life-changing. Glory to God. Hey, I am out of time. But remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills, and break every curse in your life.